name is John Howard. Oh, there were two founders, two co-owners. One is retired now, so it's me and the owner now. And I've been full-time here since about 1990. Uh, the zine era, those people had a lot. They were very self-motivating, very, very energetic, so they, they get the whole thing together themselves. So they just, you know, put it all down. Pho photography, drawing, poetry, you have music, everything, then see, it, see what you think. There are people who review records or review live shows. Um, just little mini journalists. You go to a show or you get a record, you go to the copy shop and you make Xerox copies and staple them together and you know in a day you get you get your your magazine out there and hand it right to people. I wish there were dates but they, that's the thing about fanzines is they're not always dated and you don't even don't always know where they came from sometimes they won't even put their address on it. People used to just drop some free ones outside of the store too to give away. It's on the list. Um, this was 80s and 90s, so quite a few have been and gone. Um, a few chains, a few drugstores used to sell things. People used to sell them at shows also. You see there was a few things at bars, there was a lot of uh, little DIY spots where it would be just an empty storefront in Detroit and you'd, you'd see flyers at um, record shows or you'd have to see flyers at other shows and that's how the word would get out. It was just like, you know, pay $3 or $5 and see six or eight bands. By Tom Potter, he was in a band called Bantam Rooster, he was in Dirt Bombs for a little while, and I have a couple copies of his fanzine. Um, he was kind of more a wild character, wrote about uh, he did some cartooning and illustrating and uh, record reviews. It's a great historical item. Um, it's part of an era where there was a lot of personality put into publishing like that. Echoing the Bunnymen in there, which, you know, they, you wouldn't see that in every punk rock scene. They, they carried other things too. Um, well, they covered other things. Some weird naked pictures. <laughs> well, uh, Touch and Go, and then there was another one on the, uh, in the Boston area called Flourish Exposure. They were very influential in what people bought record-wise, and it was a big deal to get a good review of them. So I, I, you know, I would discover other like British bands or other bands around the nation that I didn't know about. It could be rude, it could be insightful, you know. And I'd love to have more fanzines in town here and have more people express themselves in a, you know, throughout the issue in artwork and writing. Most of those people had a lot of energy. <laughs>